I will invite uh, Fred to tell your story. Yes. So just I will share my screen. Thank you, Fred. Uh, where is it? Is here. And normally it should work. You should see my screen. Rene, you confirm that the yes, presentation yes. is online? Yes, yes, perfect. I yeah, perfect. it's perfect. So uh, I'm going to say, Rene, and I like this idea, I'm going to tell you a story about protection forest and natural risk, and also about NNTs. So uh, first, so where is it? It's here, yeah. First, just to give you some input about the context, and uh, I'm going to reuse the, the result, the, the main current outputs of the project Radia4, which is very interesting for many points. And here you have the trends in the perception about let's say the forest ecosystem services that are assumed as to be the most important for the different people that has been interviewed. And what you can see on this graph is that climate change mitigation, disaster and protection forest and climate change adaptation are the main important point. And it's very important dealing with protection forest. So I'm talking about protection. So it's mean that there is some risk and to be to have something to be protected, it needs to be endangered. So here are a clear definition. The risk is the combination between a hazard here, for example, a rock fall, and the presence of assets that are endangered. And if the rocks is able to reach these people, then you are in a risk situation. And if there is any forest between the starting point and the deposit one, then this forest is a protective forest. Uh, First observation, the natural risk prevention policies in all the alpine space countries, they are all in common, uh, they are all, uh, sorry, a common ancestor, which is the forester. And it's coming from two centuries ago. And uh, the main activity has been to reforest the, the mountain area. So they were able to produce some, let's say, biological engineering like this, then they were using seeds and uh, nursery, and then they were able to, to go everywhere to plant trees. So it was a first, uh, let's say, a first attempt. And the main problem is that the forester, they have, let's say, work too well. In fact, all the phenomena are now mainly extinguished, and we have a kind of forest mask, which is hidden the, the, the potential of the problem. So this is an example of a mountain in the French South Alps, it was like that in uh, 80, 70, and now it looks like that. So it's mean that the forester has been very efficient. They, they have been able to effectively afforest the mountain and to have this extinction of the, of the phenomena. So if we can give some very quick, uh, let's say, uh, analysis about what has been done. First, the conservation of the forest for the protect, protective role has been long since the beginning part of the natural risk prevention policies in the Alpine countries. Everything is coming from, let's say, the, the forester. Uh, there is a common goal is to, to put in use a framework for action for forest owners. What has to be done, what has not to be done in order to guarantee this protection effect. And in all the country, we have the similar principle. We have regulatories and legislative instruments. We have economic instruments, but we have still some differences. The vocabulary is very heterogeneous. We have disparate provision and highly variable financial means. It's depending on the country, it's depending also on the perception about the, uh, these forest ecosystem services, and also it's depending on the part of the mountain area in the country. For example, for France, the mountain part is only 25% of the national territory. If you have a look in Switzerland, it's just the opposite. So it's normal that there are some differences on this, on this point. And there are common lacks. In fact, uh, it's what I'm calling the ceiling of the values codes in the different countries. Usually, you have a forestry codes, but you have also an environmental codes, you have a urban codes, and so on and so on. And the question is how to make these different codes having an intelligent communication between them. And this is one of the weak points of the system. So what are the needs now? We need to harmonize on the, the definition on the concept. We have to improve our knowledge uh, 
Uh, I'm talking about here about FBS, which, which is for me forest based solution. There is currently a, a lot of use of nature based solution, but I think that the forester should also use this term of forest based solution for risk prevention. We need to communicate between, let's say, the, the forester, but also all the, the other stakeholders. And we have to anticipate the impact of climate change, what is calling now the cascading effect of uh, climate changes. So if we have a look since the 1960s, there is an increase in the knowledge about protection forest. Uh, it, this is a, here an accounting of the number of publication. And what is nice to see is that mainly these studies are coming from Austria, France, Germany, Italy, Slovenia, Switzerland. In fact, the Alpine countries. Okay, so it's a real reservoir of knowledge on the, of research on this topic. So what can be done? So this is an example coming from another uh, Alpine space project, which, is, which was called Rock Diabs. So we can, for example, for rockfall, we can do this kind of experiments, throwing real rocks in a real forest and to have a real bound on the trees. So it's the objective of uh, focusing on two main points. First, it's the increase of the knowledge, but also it's a part of communication to show to the stakeholders that forests could be efficient. So using this, you can do uh, an improvement of modeling tools and you can do this kind of large scale mapping. It has been the production of the first Alpine space map about protection forest against rockfall. And here, what you have to keep in mind, it's a, that's about 20% of the forest have this protective role, which is mean it's a very important forest ecosystem services. And this is only for rockfall, but if we're making the same things for snow avalanches, landslide, flooding, I'm sure that we will increase this number by the end and that probably about like in Switzerland, about 40% of the forest in mountain areas have a protective role. So it's mean it's very important for the well-being of population in the Alpine space area. Another project is dealing with this quantification. Here it was only a mapping without any quantification. This is the project Green Risk for Alp. And in this project, there are also some economical analyses about the, uh, the importance of this, uh, of this protection action. And also, if you are talking about knowledge, you need also to synthesize the, this knowledge in guidelines for the, uh, for, for the forester. So the first guidelines in the Alpine space has been done by our Swiss colleague, which is called the NICE. And then it has been declined in France and then also in Italy. And I know that our, that our Slovenian colleagues, they are using a kind of mix because one of the, let's say the strengths of this uh, Swiss guideline is that is, it has been produced in English, in uh, sorry, in French, in German and in Italian. So it can be used, let's say everywhere in the Alpine space. And we are facing this problem of climate change. So that's, that's a reality and we have to, to compose with it. And uh, what is quite interesting for the Alpine space area is that the three main points that has been uh, analyzed is that we will have an, an increase about the average temperature. We'll have probably more winter storm, more intense. And for example, the, what happened in, the, in Tyrol, uh, both Austrian and Italian parts with the Via storm. It's a good example about that. And we, are, we will have this species extinction, but let's say for native trees. And there is no information about the development of non-native trees. And it could be a helpful in, the, in this uh, management of these forest ecosystem services. So just to, be, to show you what could happen, uh, for example, the, here are meteorological indexes uh, uh, that are able to, to show the increase of forest fire risk in the French Alps. And this is the, the let's say the trends and what happened in the year 2003. It was a big year in France dealing with a lot of forest fire, not mega fire yet, but not far away. And what we can see is that, <coughs> sorry, both the south part and the north part of the French Alps are under this risk and this risk is increasing in the northern part. And if it's efficient, then you will have this kind of situation. So this is made in, uh, in one of the French departments, which is explaining after a forest fire, you have to be careful on the road because now there are rockfall. This is a perfect example of cascading. Yeah. Yeah. 
And now, if we have a look on non-native trees, they could be very helpful with the protective function. So I will use two examples. The first one is the uh, Atlas Cedar. So it's here, uh, we are making a small visit in the south part of France near the Mont Ventoux. And in this place, uh, people have made the overuse of the forest cover uh, uh, until the 19th century, uh, mainly for fuel wood. There were also pasture and so on. And what is nice is that in, uh, in the 16th, they, they said, OK, it's for this to, to depopulate the woods of the mountain for the damage it, it can cause, not only to the mountains, but also to the lower country. So it means that at this date, there were a clear perception of the effect of deforestation in such part. But even if this part has been completely, all the trees have been completely cut. So what has been decided is that in the, at the beginning of the 19th century, uh, they have decided to use the cedar of Atlas in order to reforest this part. So it's non-native trees of the Alpine space, and it was the first attempt in France of the use of these kind of things. So this, the seeds were coming from Algeria, and at this time, Algeria was part of the French, uh, it was one French department, in fact. And this is the, the picture that uh, I was able to collect about the job that has been done in this part. So the picture as from the, the end of the 19th century. So you can see that it was absolutely without any trees in all this district. And uh, one, of the, one of my colleagues have made some picture at the beginning of the 2000. And you can see the differences. It was very successful. It, it means that using this kind of cedar, they have been able to stop let's say, soil erosion, they have been able to protect a lot of people and so on. So it, it was really very well functioning. And now it's looking like that. It means that we have also amenities about the landscape, about the quality for people going to work in this area. And also they have developed a small, let's say, uh, wood industry based on cedar, not only, let's say, for uh, um, chemistry, this kind of thing, but also for the use of the wood. So it's, it is really a, a kind of success story. And this, uh, this species is well adapted to this kind of condition, and it's now growing by itself and reproducing by itself. If I take an, a second case, is the case of the even tree, even or L tree. I don't know how to call it, but so maybe we can have a talk about that. So it has been introduced in Europe mainly for ornamental, as ornamental trees in park and also in the big city for the shade that it can give. Uh, just for a small story in France, they have made a test uh, with this in order to have a specific species of sick worm, but it was absolutely not functioning, but they have used more than uh, 400,000 plants. And you can imagine what happened with uh, this kind of trees. The plants went everywhere. What is also inter interesting is that in uh, Austria and in, uh, let's say, previous Russia, it has been planted massively in order to do windbreak hedges and also for question about uh, er soil erosion and stabilization of slopes and embankment. And it was near some river and so on, so then it was able to spread largely all around. We have this kind of, uh, let's say, strategy and policies uh, of dealing with these invasive trees because it's a really invasive uh, species. So you can have this, this is coming from the UK, this is coming from France and uh, working on, on the side of the citizen uh, participation on science and how, how to avoid this dissemination and so on. But if you are making some mechanical tests on these trees, and this is a test that we have conducted in Switzerland with uh, our colleagues from the um, WSL. Uh, the mechanical property of eventry is very good. If I put it here on my graph of both the different species, you can see that is one of the top one. So it's mean that in terms of protection effect, these trees, even trees, are very good. And uh, due to this invasiveness characteristic, we can have a very quick cover of a big part of the land and so a good offering about protection forest. 
And here is the black locust, which is one of the best three in terms of mechanical property and also against rockfall. So how to deal with that? And uh, just to give you some French uh, overview about uh, NNT regulation in France. So uh, we have a specific convention on biological diversity. Uh, and it's clearly expressing that we shall prevent the introduction of control or eradicate those alien species with which threatens ecosystem habitat of species. So we are mainly on the part of, let's say, uh, public health, phytosanit phytosanitary and biodiversity question. And in fact, the main tool in France is based on the uh, European regulation on the prevention and management and introduction and spreading of invasive alpine species. I will not be more detailed, but I was talking about sealing between the different codes. So here is an example from the French part. We have uh, a code dealing with biodiversity. We have uh, one dealing with rural and maritime fishery codes. We have one dealing with public health. We have using this for trying to synthesize all these codes in the national strategy on invasive alien species. But it's mainly dealing on invasive alien species, not on non-native trees. So we are first to analyze this invasiveness characters. And then you have five axes. And uh, with this, and maybe one of the most important one is the last one, is the governance. How to deal? Because for some of the species, for example, the haven trees, uh, I think that the fight is lost. We have to, to manage and to deal with. So how, how to do it if we don't put in use an efficient governance activity? So what are my main take home message? So forests are very important, maybe the, the most important actor in risk mitigation. We need of a clear definition of what we can call forest-based solution because non-native trees, they can be part of nature-based solution. So we have to, to see what we can do with that. Uh, these forest-based solutions are, are one of the response to the societal request about what we are calling integrated territorial management, including all ecosystem services. And again, what are the part of non-native trees in this territorial development. We need a strong political support. That's very important. In France, there is a decrease on this political support. And uh, so we have to recover about that. And I don't know how it is in the other country, but I think that mainly all the other country, they have a better perception due to the fact that mountains are very important part of their land. We are still needing scientific knowledge and everybody has a small part of the puzzle. So we need to, to push uh, project like Alp Trees or like Green Risk for Alp and so on. So uh, please, uh, we have to keep in contact and we have to think for, to the future for new projects. Uh, we have to anticipate climate change impact. We have yesterday a lot of presentation about uh, tree species distribution. We have to take care about that and uh, if we are talking only about protective characteristic of NNTs, we have to study them. We have to have a clear knowledge about the associated risk of these non-native trees. Uh, it could be invasiveness, it could be phytosanitary, but we need to know if we can have them as a species reservoir for fighting natural risk. And we have to harmonize all the policies. That's very important because, uh, for example, uh, and I. Uh, John will stop me if I'm wrong, but the Alpine Convention not allowed to have uh, subsidies for planting non-native trees in the Alpine area. So how to deal with this? For example, Douglas fir, and we will have a presentation about that. Uh, the cedar, they are representing a nice reservoir in order to fight the impact of climate change and the extinction or modification of, uh, let's say, tree composition and species. And, and my main conclusion is NNTs have been, are, or could be our friends, but also enemies, and we don't know them. So we have to improve really our knowledge about this point. And see if, we are be, if we will be able to do this, then we will have better regulation, better adapt policies. So keep this in mind, and uh, I will stop sharing my, uh, my screen.
Thank you, Fred. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. So we have uh, two questions here. One is, uh, do you have experience in your region with candidate NNT species, which can act as alternative to native ones where climate change specifically for such gravitational hazards? Very so, quickly. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have made some, and we are conducting some tests for snow avalanches afforestation. Uh, so we are using non-native trees to see if they are if they are better adapt than what we can have. And for example, some larix coming from Japan. This is one example. Uh, we are making this kind of test with even tree. Uh, it's not a tree, but uh, oh, it's it's a small tree. Let's say like that. What is the the butterfly uh, butterfly tree uh, Buglesia, uh, which is very good for recovering large uh, large part of scale in the land. And it's very good for stopping soil erosion, eventually uh, fighting again uh, shallow landslide and this kind of thing. So we are starting to work with this and also with Acer Negundo. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it could be very uh, efficient because it's growing very well. What we are looking for, it's a very quick covering of the, of the land. So uh, the question is where to stop this road covering, not to exceed the part that we want to work on. And uh, there is also a question from Alexander. Yes, we have natural regeneration of Atlas Cedar in this part. Mm -hmm. And uh, something very important, at the beginning, they, they made a plantation of about 400 hectares. And now we are more than 1,400 hectares. And it's natural regeneration. So it's working very well. Is it uh, natural generation of uh, Atlas cedar or also native species are mixing with this? Mixing, mixing, mixing but uh, like I will say that 75% is cedar and for the rest it's more this kind of uh, uh, accompanying trees to this uh, main species. Okay, thank you.